Easy, I'm Scepter and you're tuned into another Ableton Live tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be talking about working in audio versus working in MIDI. I'll give you my top five reasons why I think audio is more effective, but that said we'll compare them both as we go along. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Cool, so here we are inside Ableton Live. I'll just play you through the project first. I do all this side. So you get the idea. Now, working in audio for me um, has really a lot more pros than what MIDI does, hence why I do work that way. So if I go from one, one to five, um, number one would definitely be the fact that I can visually see the waveforms. It's much easier to identify problems if you can see the waveform because eradicating clicks and pops um, is much easier. So for example, if we have a look at this snare drum here, uh, if I had a problem or a click or a pop in the snare drum itself, you'd be able to see a little spike in the audio file. That's much easier than, well, it's not a case of it being much easier. I can then address that click or the pop um, directly in the audio file, whereas if I had that in a sampler, then I'd have to export it out of the sampler, correct it, and then put it back in the sampler again. Now, for me, that's a really long-winded process, so I want to be able to work as quick as possible, and I can see whether the click is in the audio file or whether it's a setting within the sampler, so it's easier to identify the source of the problem straight away as well. Um, that said, I know a lot of people that do use um, samplers, uh, especially for drums, because you can create whole libraries or presets with all the snare drums that you want in there um, and all the kicks that you might want and the same with hi-hats and just interchange them really quickly as opposed to going through your um, kind of media window here and trying to find something, loading it in, arranging it, you know, and taking it out again. So that one, it really is down to personal preference, as they're all going to be. Um, but yeah, that's definitely number one for me. Um, number two, again, it, it is to do with arrangement, and that is the fact that it's easier for me to quickly, uh, say if we do work with the snare drum again, so I wanted to add an extra snare drum, or like I have done in this little part here, add an extra snare drum just here, um, I can copy and paste it just with one one key command. So it does come down to speed. Whereas if I was in the sampler um, and I maybe wanted to change the um, arrangement of the snares or the kicks, then I'd have to open my little MIDI window, move it around, uh, close it up, go back to the arrangement window. You know, it, it seems trivial, but those differences in speed always make a difference to my workflow because I get very bored very quickly. Um, now, number three is really uh, one that might revolve more about around what type of music that you're creating or, or writing. And now if we take this edit uh, in this kind of section just here, when we have a listen to this. <laughs> Cool. Um, the I have lots of sounds which are morphing from one into another, uh, like these reverse uh, kind of reverbs here. The the drums stop a beat early. 
then I've got a little fill and then another fill with a reverse reverb just before it and then reverb on the um, last snare there. Now it's important that I'm in audio for this because I can see exactly where each sound starts and ends. So these reverse reverbs uh, that I've got, I have them finishing on snare drums when I know that the bass is definitely cut out here uh, and there's no tail on it bleeding into this kind of empty space that I want. The fill I know starts directly on the bar. Um, the reverb is slightly later on this one, but that is deliberate. I can see that the reverb on the second fill starts just before the actual drum fill does and there's no bleed over from the reverb into the drum fill. And I also know that my last snare drum definitely lines up with the snare drum in my kind of rolling break, if you like, where the drum, uh, where the bass comes back in as well. So I can clearly see that everything stops and starts exactly where I want it to. Whereas within uh, a MIDI instrument or a synth, the, or sorry, a sampler, you might have attack and release times which are making those sounds kind of bleed over into each other and I find a lot of the time that isn't what what I want or what I'm aiming to get so it's easier for me to generate these kind of edits quicker um, because I know that the sound is starting and stopping where I want it to. Uh, yeah. Number four is to do with third party plugins. Now obviously whether you're processing a MIDI instrument or a sample, the way that that audio effect affects the sound itself is absolutely no different. But you can achieve the sounds uh, of using audio effects without actually using them. So what I mean by that is if we use sidechain, for example, and I wanted to sidechain my kick and my snare drum, uh, sorry, not my kick, my, my kick and my bass. The point in that would be to duck the bass frequencies out where the kicks kick. Now, if I do that with a compressor, setting up attack and release times um, can be a bit of a fiddly process and it can be ha hard to identify exactly what you're doing when you're you know, twisting the knobs inside the compressor. Um, and you might have uh, a plugin which doesn't sidechain when you want it to. So, for example, if I use the kick and the bass, so you can hear a click that's happening there. Um, and I might, these aren't side chains at all, so I've just put it together for the sake of the project. Um, but if I wanted to sidechain the kick and the snare, it would be to get rid of the bass, sorry, kick and the bass, would be to get rid of the bass when the kick is kicking. Now, if I'm working in audio, I can just delete it out of the way. So, and I know it's definitely gone. There's the, the equivalent of the compressor would definitely be acting when I want it to. Um, and I can be more accurate with when the bass comes back in. So rather than having it cut out the whole way. I can just have it cut out for the transient, which is the beginning of the sound, and then you know, creep back in as the kick gets quieter. So you have this perfect kind of crossfade action, which to do within a compressor, it can be really hard to know whether you're achieving what you actually want to achieve. So that's a really important one. Uh, and then the last one is to do with pitching. Now, I started using uh, music software, I started using Logic 7 uh, when I started and within Logic 7 it was really hard to pitch sounds up and down because it doesn't have this uh, audio matrix window down here um, that Ableton has and that's actually really the main reason that I switched to Ableton in the first place. Um, Logic 10 has that now, what I'm talking about was obviously a few years ago um, but it meant that I could pitch my sounds up and down. So if I'm using things that I've made before and they might be in a different key to my previous track, um, that I could do that really quickly. What you used to have to do with MIDI, uh, sorry, with samplers was put your sound in the sampler, it would assign it to the keys on the keyboard and then you could pitch it up the amount of steps on the keyboard 
um, that would give you your desired pitch, if that makes sense. Now, Logic 10, Ableton, I'm sure Pro Tools and all the other uh, kind of digital arrangement windows have this pitching fu function now, which is really easy to use. So it's, it's not so relevant to me now, um, but it was back in the day. Um, and again, it comes down to speed really and how quickly you can work. Um, so yeah, one to five, pretty simple ones, but you know, some of all things kind of marginal gains type uh, video, I guess, because it really makes a difference to me um, in achieving the end product that I want. Um, but as I said, there is no right or wrong answer. You can just, you know, work to your preference and you'll probably find, I'll probably find that there's people that use MIDI that, that can use it much faster than what I can. And for that reason, they work in MIDI rather than working in audio. So who knows really, I'll be interested to know. So do leave it in the comments if you do prefer MIDI. Um, and if you do, do tell me why, because I'm open to always changing the way that I work. I change the way that I work all the time. So cool, that about wraps up for that one. Cool, so thanks again for watching. Hopefully that was helpful for a few people out there. Audio and MIDI, there's no real right or wrong answer. It's just a case of what suits your workflow best. I'll have another video up next week and I'm also starting a new show called Triday Friday and on that I'm going to be doing different reviews of different bits of gear that I've got and anything that I might buy. So stay in tune for that. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.